Hi everyone. In today's short video, I want to look at the topic of getting the timing right in Brian 2. That is the topic of scheduling. What do I mean by scheduling? By scheduling, I mean Brian's mechanism to determine the order of operations during a simulation. And this is uh, often a topic of confusion or errors. So I want to have a closer look at it. And in this video, we'll more specifically look at the importance for recording values with a state monitor. So let's dive right in. I'm running some preparatory code to get a brine simulation running. And then I have this little brine simulation here that consists of a leaky integrated fire neuron with a constant input current. If I run this simulation and plot the membrane potential, the result is what we expect. The membrane potential goes up up to a certain point until it hits the threshold and then the reset kicks in and takes the membrane potential down to, in this case, minus 70 millivolt. If we look closer at the membrane potential though, we see something that often confuses people. That is, our membrane potential actually never touches or crosses the threshold. Here in this example, the highest value it ever gets to is something like minus 50.025 millivolts. So why is this the case? This has to do with how operations are arranged in a single time step and whenever you're interested in finding out more about this there's a function that is very useful called scheduling summary. If we execute this function we get a little table of operations that were scheduled during a single time step in this case we have a state monitor, we have the state update step, so the integration of the numerical uh, the numerical integration of the differential equations in the neuron group, we have the check of the threshold and we have the reset. What we can see here is that the state monitor is the first thing that gets executed at every time step. And now the fact that we never see it crossing the threshold suddenly all makes sense. So in a time step where the membrane potential cross the, crosses the threshold, what happens is at the beginning of the time step we record the membrane potential which is at something around minus 50.025 millivolts. Then the state updater will update the value of the membrane potential. So the constant current input will push the membrane potential over the threshold. And then the thresholder will see that the membrane potential is above the threshold and say this neuron emits a spike. The next step will be the resetter, which resets the membrane potential back to minus 70 millivolt, and that's the end of the time step. And in the next time step, the state monitor will record the minus 70 millivolt membrane potential and everything will continue. So the state monitor here never sees the membrane potential above the threshold. In a time step where it crosses the threshold, the state monitor records the membrane potential before that step. So how can we change this if for some reason we are interested in the membrane potential before it gets checked by the thresholder, for example? The way to change this is by changing the when attribute of the state monitor. So every object be it a state monitor, a neuron group, a synapses, etc., are scheduled according to this when and the order attribute. Where the when attribute tells Brian in which of a number of predefined slots the object should be executed. To have a look at the slots, we can look at the scheduling attribute of the MAGIC network, where MAGIC just stands for a network where we don't explicitly create a network object. If we look at the schedule in this example, we see that there are six different slots, the start slot, groups, thresholds, synapses, resets, and end. And each of these operations by default is arranged into one of these slots. If there's more than one object within the same slot, the order attribute would determine the order of the multiple objects in these slots. But additionally, there, there's a number of slots that are not listed here that are in between these other slots. 
for each of the names there's also a before and after slot so for example there's a slot called before thresholds or after thresholds and we can use this for example in the state monitor to record the membrane potential before the threshold crossing is checked and if we run now the simulation at the first side it looks similar but if we now zoom in very closely we see that this now actually records the membrane potential before it is checked for a threshold crossing and before the reset takes place so we now see the state monitor in the recorded membrane potential by the state monitor we see the membrane potential above the threshold and of course this is reflected in the scheduling summary here we now see that the state monitor is after the state updater and no longer before I hope this little video made the concept of scheduling a bit clearer and the next time when you see the state monitor seemingly recording wrong values you can check with the scheduling summary function and understand what exactly is going on. In a future video we will have a look at the effect of scheduling in synapses where of course timing plays a big role and this concept is very important as well.